Welcome to the Bowtie Guy Podcast. This is your boy, Bowtie Guy, also known as James Horton, also known as Mr. Horton. Now, on the last part of our teacher influence on student achievement, we were talking about teacher credibility, street cred, if you will. Here's the thing, I, was t- I, I left you with a cliffhanger, and you're like wondering yourself, if you paid attention in the last part, you're like, by God, why, why are all the naysayers, why are, why are all the people around Mr. Horton, why are they bipolar? Why, why do some people love him, why some people hate him? I'm just going to be honest with you. Street cred hurts. Teacher cred hurts. Teachers hate what they aren't. Look, and I'm saying it, if you're enthusiastic to be there, you're going to have people that's going to hate that. And I'm just going to be honest with you. They don't like someone being happy. They don't like someone being a nerd for education. They don't because, you know, their motives need to be checked. They're there for that check. They're not there for you and to be inspired to have their fire lit. Now, teacher credibility, parents know, teachers know, students know whether or not that teacher wants to be there. By God, I'll I'll just go and be honest with you. There came a point, and, and when I say I've been teaching for 10 years, I'm telling a lie taught nine and a half and you're like half oh snap it's about to get juicy now nah, i'm gonna let my haters be my motivators and i'm just gonna tell you it got to a point in my 10th year teaching where i had to throw up the deuces why did i have to throw up the deuces and say goodbye it was the hardest thing i ever had to do and i left in december and it was amicable and i requested my release from my contract in december and i was granted that release and and here's the thing i'm a troublemaker <laughs> you may be thinking, oh God, he's a trouble. No, uh, I, I love to initiate change and affect. And I'm going to be honest with you. I, I really hurt every night um, when I was loving my kids every day. But no one, or I, I have to be careful generalizing. I just didn't see the love for those kids in my community, my brethren of teachers that I had. And what I'm saying is, you can only fight that battle for so long. And it has been it had been several years where I tried to fight the fight. And you know, and when we're doing things as a community, when we're doing things as a district, when we're doing things as a school, as a classroom, that are not in the best interest of the students. It's about time that you have to check and wreck something. So I'm just gonna be honest with you, there came a time, nine and a half years, where I just knew that I I can't. And you know, that's one of the hardest things someone can do and it, and it, it was made financially possible uh, by teachers pay teachers and I'm just going to be honest with you uh, that's going to be a future episode where I kind of give you a little bit of a, the diatribe behind teachers pay teachers and just explain to you that financially I was afforded the opportunity to just leave in the middle of the year and it was not popular but my resignation letter was very articulate it was very humble it was, it was honestly um, heavy in the pursuit of peace where I just said that sometimes in life we're not of one of court and it, and you know we have to amicably agree to disagree and just separate and it's hard y'all it sucks but I'm just going to be honest with you there come, there came a time where I knew that I, there's nothing I could do to to be that change for my kids because I was within a system that they kind of had their own perspective of what I guess what was what was working, I guess. But I just came to the consensus that I would advocate for my kids and I would speak up and speak out loud and proud about what I knew was right and what I knew was wrong. And I just, I got sick of the games, y'all. I, look, you can't, I actually got a negative evaluation for positive learning environment. And I knew that that was my catalyst. It was time to go because what was happening was I was giving a Quizlet um, assignment and I was performing with the kids because I love doing things with the kids and we were actually reviewing uh, vocabulary from a text that we were reviewing and you know what can I be honest with you kids loving it they were up and down they were pop, 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 popping up like popcorn no I'm just kidding they were in the chairs you know and we were laughing and we were cutting up but my evaluator had a scowl on their prospective face and I saw this scowl on their face during the course of my evaluation. And a lot of context is being uh, left out here, but I'm just gonna give you the nuts and bolts. I could tell that there's nothing, nothing I could do to win the respect of that evaluator. I've been Teacher of the Year recently, within the last three years. I have uh, been invited to participate in a TED Talk. I'm one of the top selling teachers 
of all time on Teachers Pay Teachers. I have street cred, I have teacher cred, but for what matters is, if I cannot even be given the respect and dignity to share my enthusiasm, to share my gift, to share what I believe is right about research-based strategies and how we're going about leading up and, and raising up our kids, if I know that there's nothing I can do, then look, sometimes it's, it's the hardest thing you have to do is just cleave, just to go. And I love my kids, and, and, and I, I was devastated at having to leave, but teacher cred has a lot to do with that, 90%. That's one thing that administrators could never deny. They, there was always petty problems between me, the social agent change, that, that man of affect. Look, I got a loud mouth, and, and what I'm saying a loud mouth, some people, some people have greatly developed a filter for their mouth, a muzzle, if you will, where it's not okay to speak your mind all the time. And I think I'd like to think that at this stage in my life, I'm doing a lot better. But I'm just going to be honest with you. Third graders, fourth graders, they should not be trading classes five times a day like it's flipping high school. It's, it's not conducive to learning. When the achievement has been negatively affected, catastrophically, for five, six, seven years. True story. My wife, I was actually teaching at the school where uh, my wife started teaching at, um, and what happened was within seven years, the report card that the state of Georgia issues, and I know that there's different metrics because we, we look at the CCRPI, the, uh, the College and Career Readiness Index, we look at it differently now with, with a new assessment than we did seven years ago, but I'm just gonna tell you, it looks like it, smells like it, sounds like it, walks like it, it is. When my wife started teaching there, we actually heard one of her last years there at that particular school, the report card grade for the school was an A. A. When you get an A on a report card, you're pretty happy, aren't you? I would say it, it experienced that, that particular score, and now there's a lot of um, changes that happened within the county, within the, the schools, and what happened was, uh, inevitably, you had a drop. And, and, and what I'm talking about is like a drip, not a drop. And it was going drip, drop. But what happened was it went from an A, being a very successful, innovative, um, light on a hill, if you will, of a school, um, and it just perpetually dropped to a level where uh, we, the, the particular school was, I think, it was at 67, I believe. It was, a, and the state gave the school a D. And look, and I had a problem with that because if you were paying attention to an earlier podcast about influences uh, on student achievement in the classroom. You need to have classroom cohesion. But look, school cohesion, same way. I have experienced uh, times within a school where I'm pretty sure every teacher in the school hated each other. Why? There's no mission. There's no identity. There's like an identity crisis. Because no one, like, it, and I have to be careful of my generalizations, but it appeared that no one had um, a mission. Like, no, like, who are we and what are we doing? And why are we doing it? Those three questions could not be answered systematically. And you know, you, I remember from my old softball days, look, I've been on some really bad teams. And I'm talking, I've been it, on some really bad teams in my 10 years teaching. And what I'm saying is, is it okay to be the best player on a really bad team? Or should you be one of the worst players on a really good team? Now, I've had pushes. I've had interviews and I've, I've had uh, conversations to try to pluck me out and move me somewhere else, to, to help another system, to help another school, to do this and that. No, I don't give up so easily. And so, you know, as long as I had a heartbeat, I was willing to fight. But perpetually, when I'm talking about the CCRPI, the College and Career Readiness Index, when, when the students are associated with that report card grade, by God, you ought to be ashamed. Would you put a D on a report card and actually feel like a success as a teacher? By God, no. If you gave a D to a student as an instructor, as an instructor, it's because you didn't teach them correctly. You didn't meet them at their developmental readiness. There's something that you may not have done. There's like this arrogance in the profession where we realize that, you know, oh, we're hoity-toity. Huh, no. You ain't all that in a bag of potato chips. Neither am I. There's always room for growth. But if your achievement doesn't match your instruction, it's time to change. That's it for this part of the episode. Check out 
the conclusion of teacher influence on student achievement. This is the Bowtie Guy Podcast. We'll see you next time. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.